Hey guys, Sean here from Tessa Family. We've got a bit of a winter storm moving through central Maryland here. Heavy wet snow, about two inches already. And we can see the solar panels on my roof here are completely covered. That has shut down production for the day. And we do have Powerwall now added onto my system. Thankfully, Tesla Stormwatch kicked in yesterday and charged up my Powerwall. There's a winter storm warning in effect for my area with a total expected snowfall of three to seven inches. So far, we've picked up about two inches of heavy wet snow and it's sticking to all the branches in the area. In my neighborhood, we do have underground power wires, but if power were to go down across my county, that could impact my neighborhood. Thankfully, I've got a fully charged Tesla Powerwall ready to provide my home with backup power in the event of a power outage. Let's rewind to yesterday before the storm arrived and take a closer look at Stormwatch and how it's protecting our home from a power outage in the event that this heavy wet snow falling today knocks out power in the neighborhood. Before you get further into this video, make sure to check out my first year Tesla solar review and top five video. That's linked above and I'm showing where I'm saving over a thousand dollars a year having Tesla solar. And check out my Tesla referral Powerwall installation video. Pretty cool video with some time lapse showing the installation of my Tesla Powerwall. All right, we're in the garage right next to my Tesla Powerwall. We can see this Pulsing green light here on Powerwall means Powerwall is charging. Normally Powerwall is only charged by solar power, but when Stormwatch is activated, we top off Powerwall with the grid. All right guys, we're taking a look at my Tesla app, and here we see my home energy gateway. My Powerwall is being charged by the grid right now because we are in Stormwatch mode for that winter storm warning. Day one, this afternoon and tonight. Winter storm warnings are in effect late tonight across portions of northern and central Virginia, central and southern Maryland, and Washington, D.C. Expecting 3 to 7 inches of snow tonight and winds gusting as high as 35 miles per hour. Clicking on Stormwatch pops up a notification here that says Powerwall charging for Stormwatch event. And then I click on Learn More and it takes us to the Tesla website with more information on Stormwatch. Okay, moving over to the desktop format for Stormwatch information, just to save your eyes a little bit here. Tesla says, severe weather is the leading cause of grid outages. Stormwatch allows you to maximize savings by keeping a low backup reserve percentage in self-powered or time-based control mode, while still having peace of mind that Powerwall will automatically react to protect you during a severe weather event. When Stormwatch is enabled, Powerwall will automatically activate Stormwatch mode when the National Weather Service sends a severe weather alert. This mode pushes the limits and charges Powerwall to a maximum capacity so it can provide backup power. You will receive an app notification when Stormwatch mode is activated. This remains active until the weather event ends and your system will return to its previously selected mode. Although you cannot manually activate Stormwatch mode, or adjust its behavior, you can choose to disable Stormwatch altogether by going to the Tesla app, tapping on the settings screen, and disabling Stormwatch. You can re-enable Stormwatch at any time during a weather event. And scrolling down further, we'll talk about the severe weather events that trigger Stormwatch. Stormwatch mode is triggered during severe storms that are more likely to knock down power lines and cause outages. Stormwatch mode activates when the weather event has advanced in severity, and one of the following watches or warnings from the National Weather Service has been issued in your local area. A hurricane watch or warning, a tropical storm watch or warning, a red flag warning. Red flag warnings are issued for gusty winds and low relative humidity. A severe thunderstorm warning. Severe thunderstorm warnings are issued for thunderstorms that can produce hail greater than or equal to one inch in diameter or wind gusts greater than or equal to 60 miles per hour. A tornado warning, a winter storm warning, which is what triggered my storm watch mode for this video, a blizzard warning, a high wind warning, an ice storm warning, a snow squall warning, 
wind chill warning and wind advisory. Wind advisories are actually quite common in many places across the US. So I'm actually pretty curious why Tesla added wind advisory to trigger storm watch mode. If storm watch mode hasn't activated based on your local weather conditions and you prefer additional energy security, set a higher backup reserve in advance of an anticipated grid outage. To better prepare yourself for everyday weather events or other grid instability, visit your utility provider's website for updates. Stormwatch is supported in the following regions, North America, Australia, and New Zealand. I'll show you how to enable Stormwatch mode from within the Tesla app coming up real shortly in the video here, but Tesla does indicate the steps here, very simple. Step number one from the home screen, open the settings menu. Step number two, scroll down and then enable Stormwatch. Your system will continue to operate as normal and your power wall will automatically react to severe weather events that may cause a grid outage. When storm watch mode activates due to a severe weather event in your area, power wall charges to full, protecting against outages. There's a special note down here at the bottom that Tesla uses an open database of cell tower locations to improve the performance of features, including storm watch accuracy. Well, we were able to charge up power wall through the 20s today before storm watch kicked in here at right around 2.30 p.m. when that winter storm warning was issued. And now we're charging Powerwall at 3.3 kilowatts. So far for the day, only 4.6 kilowatts of solar regeneration. Again, it's been cloudy all day long. And my house has used 8.3 kilowatt hours. My net grid usage is positive 6.3 kilowatt hours, and that's only going to increase because we are charging Powerwall with the grid because of the winter storm warning. Normally, however, Powerwall only charges with solar. Taking a look at the settings, we can see here that I have my backup reserve set at 20% for a grid outage and 80% for self-powered. Scrolling down, here is the setting where we can activate and deactivate storm watch mode. It's a little slider bar here in the settings menu of the Tesla app. If we do go off grid, I have vehicle charging set to use only 50% of my power walls charge. All right, we now have a full power wall charged up to 100% thanks to Stormwatch. And that took about three hours for it to go from 20% up to 100%. So now we are sitting with a full power wall in the event that this winter storm that's coming in overnight does take out our power. Pretty cool technology from Tesla and power wall. I think the cost of Powerwall is worth the security in knowing that you'll have power in the event that your neighborhood loses power. Oh, whoa. Uh, what is that? Snow. Snow day? Yeah. Snow day! Yay! No school? Beautiful. Is this your first snow day? What do you think? Oh, it's ah, actually sticking to the okay. road. All right, guys, we're out here on the back deck. Let's take a measurement of our heavy, wet snow here. You can see the really scenic snowfall sticking to everything. So that could cause some issues with power later on with all this heavy weight being added to the power lines. But let's take a measurement here locally in central Maryland just north of Washington, D.C. We're sitting at, uh, let's go with, eh, we'll go with two inches, just shy of two inches of heavy, wet snow. In fact, it's real good snowball making snow. This is the first time I've ever seen snowfall stick to every part of my deer fence here in the backyard. Normally snow just blows right through it and hits the ground. All right, guys, the storm is over. We've actually got some sunshine that's popped out, but our solar panels are still covered in snow. So despite the sun, we're not producing any solar right now. And we are still in storm watch mode, uh, despite the warning, the winter storm warning has been expired. Um, I'm thinking that Tesla is gonna hold us into storm watch mode until the original expiration time of the warning, which was gonna be four o'clock Eastern nights currently about 315 we'll see what happens here but hey it doesn't hurt to hold that 100 percent charge on the power wall uh, because even after the storm goes away if the winds picked up or something like that we could still lose power 
So I'll check back in a little bit later when we drop out of storm watch mode and we'll see how the power wall reacts. All right, guys, it's around 4.30 here in the evening following the winter storm. And as expected, we dropped out of storm watch mode right when the original warning time ended for the winter storm warning at 4 p.m. And our power wall is now discharging the saved up power to our home. And that should hold us right through the night tonight. A couple hours after the snow has ended, again, the sun is still out even though we're near sunset but the panels are still covered in snow. So you can see we're still not generating any solar, but we are now discharging the power wall battery. We've dropped out of storm watch mode, holding 100% charge in the power wall, but discharging at 0.9 kilowatts. Our solar panels remain covered and with the cold temperatures dropping down into the teens tonight, I am expecting that snowpack to hold its place. Even though tomorrow the forecast is calling for sunshine, we're not gonna be able to produce any solar until we lose that snow cover on the solar panels. Typically that comes in the form of a massive snow avalanche that slides off the solar panels. We had that happen a couple of times last year uh, and usually that occurs when the air temperature warms up above freezing, which I think later tomorrow afternoon that may happen. I'm hoping that we'll lose the snow cover sooner than later so we can start generating solar energy again, but really it's up to those temperatures to determine when that snow pack is gonna slide off the panels. All right, one day after the winter storm and the sun is out, but my solar panels are still covered in snow. Let me show you my test lab here. 0.1 kilowatts is actually reaching my panels. If you take a look at my top tier here of my 20 panel array, there's just a bit of solar panel showing up. So that must be the only part of my solar array that's actually able to uh, make it into my home and charge my power wall right now. My four panel array here, I do have a 24 panel system, is still completely covered with snow. These panels are facing west, so with the lower sun angle, it's gonna take a long time for that snow to melt. I am expecting this snow to come down here sometime today in a giant solar panel avalanche. And when that happens, we'll be able to generate a lot more solar energy. All right guys, right after I recorded that last clip, we did get a little snow avalanche from the panels. And now look at this. We are about, I don't know, I'd say two thirds clear here on my 20 panel array. The snow came down and piled. Oh, here comes a little bit. <laughs> the snow came down and piled onto a part of my steps here and then right on top of my landscape bushes here. In fact, a couple of them are quite crushed from the weight of that heavy wet snow. This guy's about crushed in half. Hopefully it doesn't damage them. And this one over here also quite crushed. But hey, now I'm happy that we're gonna be collecting a lot more solar energy from the panels now that the snow is sliding right off. After a mini snow avalanche cleared off around two thirds of my main 20 panel array, now we're up to 0.6 kilowatts of solar. And without stronger solar, we're not able to charge up my power wall above the 20% threshold that we have set now. You can see here the sharp increase in solar production right at the time when the avalanche cleared off the solar panels. Pretty neat stuff here. All right, let's do a quick three-day performance summary for my Tesla solar and power wall during this winter storm. This is from January 2nd through the 4th. And again, I have a 7.56 kilowatt solar panel array with a 13.5 kilowatt hour power wall. Starting out on Sunday, there were several days leading up to this storm that were very cloudy that really didn't allow my power wall a chance to charge up. So my power wall charge level is holding around 20% the day before the storm arrives. There was a little bit of sunshine available the day before, and we can see that there was some charging going on that was done from my solar panels leading up to right around 2.30, and that's where Stormwatch kicked in, and that held for around three hours. That's where my power wall in Stormwatch mode was drawing from the grid just to ensure that I have a 100% charge going into this storm. Again, that was triggered by the winter storm warning that was issued right around 2.30 p.m. on January 2nd. Once power wall was fully charged, power wall remained in standby mode, and then right around the middle of the day of the winter storm, I'm not really sure what was going on here. There was a little bit of discharge that was going on and then a short period of a charge from the grid, 
but then back into standby, standby mode. But despite that, we didn't see any dip in power wall charge level, so it must be a little hiccup there. Not a big deal. We can see where the winter storm warning was dropped around 4 p.m. because at that time, my power wall began discharging and it discharged right through the evening hours and see a steady drop here from around 100% down to, oh, I'd say around 30 or 40% by midnight of that night. Moving into the morning of Tuesday, January 4th, we still continue to drain power wall back down to that 20% threshold that I have set. And then from there, power wall remained in a standby mode until we got a little bit of solar in the middle of the day on Tuesday. We'll talk a little bit more about that next. We are able to do a slight bit of charging, but looking at the charge level, it really didn't fluctuate the charge level too much. Total power wall discharge during the three day period here, 13.1 kilowatt hours, which happens to be very close to the total amount of energy available within a single power wall, which is what I have. Of course, it'd be great to have two, three, maybe four power walls. Um, they are quite pricey, but I'm just happy to have this one power wall here as a, to serve as a backup in case we do lose grid power during a storm. Looking at solar for the three day period, we did have a slight bit of solar here the day before the winter storm, 4.7 kilowatt hours, and then the whole day of the winter storm and even the period after the winter storm where the sun came out, we did not generate any solar. And this is reflective of the panels being completely covered with snow. Finally, we've got a little bit of snow melt on the day after the storm where there was a slight bit of solar production and then you can see a sharp increase. I showed earlier in the video, this is where that mini snow avalanche occurred and we went up to around 0.8 kilowatts, which really isn't all that high uh, compared to say summertime levels where we could be pushing up or above six kilowatts. For the three day period, a measly 6.2 kilowatt hours, but that can be expected when you have solar and there's a winter storm. Home usage. So here's all the energy that my home used in the three day period of 48.4 kilowatt hours. And there really isn't much to show you here in these graphs. Um, generally, we're seeing the cycling of my heating system. Uh, sometimes maybe we're using the dryer or toaster oven or something to cook dinner. Moving on to grid usage. Net grid use during the three day period was 44.2 kilowatt hours. Really, we'd like to see that at zero or negative. We like to be earning credits with the grid, but hey, it's the middle of winter time and that really doesn't happen because of the low sun angle. We'll see a extended period of negative grid use once we get a little bit further into the spring. But kind of some cool traces here, starting out with Sunday, we could see that uh, we were using some grid energy overnight leading up to the day before the storm. And then here's a short period where we were drawing from the power wall. Then we see this sharp spike in grid usage. This is where we're charging the power wall. And then while power wall is holding the standby, we're just feeding off the grid at that point. Right through the night when the snow started flying and during much of the day of the snowstorm. And then another sharp spike that correlates with that uh, little hiccup that we saw earlier in the power wall charge level. And then here's the cool part. Once the storm watch ended, we dropped out of standby mode and we started discharging the power wall. So starting around uh, four o'clock in the afternoon, the day of the storm, we used zero grid usage because we're drawing completely off power wall. Power wall lasted till around 6 a.m. until it hit that 20% mark. And then we're back to drawing from the grid again because while we did have some solar, the sun angle is really super low in the sky and the panel still had some snow on them. This shows a need to remain connected to the grid uh, especially in the winter time and in, in, during periods of stormy weather. Check out my Tesla Solar and Powerwall playlist for more information. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you really enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to Tesla Family Channel here on YouTube. We really appreciate all of our subscribers and everyone who watches our videos. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you soon. Check out all of our other videos as well. Also, follow us on Twitter at Tesla Family Chan. Use my referral code to buy Tesla solar roof or solar panels. You'll get a reward after system activation.